Coming up with a game plan with Ron Rivera. The Commanders head out to the Golden State for a matchup with the Los Angeles Rams. We'll take you inside the matchup and head into the film room with Coach to break down some of our explosive playmakers. And we'll hear from some Washington legends about how to leave La La Land with a dub. It's your inside look at the game plan and it starts right now. The Game Plan with Ron Rivera is brought to you by your local Washington area Honda dealers. Visit your local Washington area Honda dealer today to see our sleek Accord hybrid or our versatile CRV hybrid. Contact your local Washington area Honda dealer today for a great deal on the Honda for you. And by the Maryland Lottery Fast Play Games. Play fast, win fast today. Please play responsibly. Welcome to the Game Plan with Coach Ron Rivera. I'm Logan Paulson. Coach, coming off the bye week, pretty exciting, kind of getting back in the swing of things. You're going into LA, right? There's a guy out there named Aaron Donald. What do you think of that young man? I mean, is he, is he a young man still? He's probably still a young man no, to you. He's, yeah, he's a young man, <laughs> that's for sure, but he is a veteran guy, and he's a heck of a football player. Yeah. Really. He's, a, he's a really good person, too, and I've had the pleasure of being around him and getting a ch chance to talk with him. So, But he is an exciting, dynamic guy. And what makes him so special, Coach? I think the way he plays. He plays with tremendous leverage, power, quickness, and speed. He can Combines it all. Everything that you're looking for in a defensive tackle, this is this this guy has it, um, and he's a very smart, savvy football player as well. And I think he also plays hard, coach. Yes. Right? Like he hard. Uh, effort covers up a lot of yes. stuff. So in terms of Tyler Larson and that offensive line, they definitely got to know where he's yep. at. How do you kind of account for a guy that does everything the way he does it? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that we'll have to do is ID where he is, mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Big, got big 99 should be easy to find him, right? Yes. Another guy that's out there that's pretty exciting and fun to watch is Sean McVay, yes. right? And what he's doing with that offense. Have you had an opportunity to meet Sean, and yes. what are your thoughts on him? You know, Sean's a, a, a very intelligent. He really is. He understands and gets offensive football and how to attack defenses. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that you can't sit there and give him a chance to say, okay, this is what you're going to do. This is how they're going to do it. Because if you do that time and time again, he's going to attack you time and time again. You've got to, you've got to come in you've got to be very well prepared to adapt and change to what he has and, he, and I think the other thing he does and the, you know every version of this offense this kind of West Coast Kyle Shanahan offense has changed he seems to rely a lot on Matthew Stafford guy making a lot of plays for him what do you think of where he's how, how he's playing right now well I think Matthew's playing at a high level as well you know because again he sees a lot he's a very veteran guy again you've got to make sure your looks aren't always the same you've got to you've got to mix them up you've got to disguise a little bit and then you just got to go out and you got to play fast and you got to match their speed and then play even faster and you mentioned disguising like how do you kind of because last week we were talking about simplifying, simplifying, yeah. simplifying, and I think it helped the guys out a lot. How do you simplify while still, you know, make it confusing for Matthew? Well, I think the big thing is, again, is, is are you always going to start in, in, in a, in a two-shell look? Mm. Or you can always start with somebody high in the post. And again, those are things that you've got to be able to do. Show somebody high in the post, drop him down, bring somebody else out to the, to the other side. Now you're in cover two. Start in cover two, drop and rotate. Now you're in cover one. So you've got to be able to present something different for him to see and make him go through the progression of understanding what you really are in. Yeah, and we can talk about X's and O's all day, but ultimately you need players to get that done. And we're going to talk about a couple of those guys right now. Let's take a look at this week's Commander Spotlight, presented by Northwest Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of the Washington Commanders. Where there's smoke, there may be fire. Veteran Curtis Samuel and rookie KJ Henry have been recently making plays that could be the light that gets this offense going against the Rams this Sunday. KJ Henry's been looking really well this last couple weeks. Sacks, quarterback hits, tack for losses. Great to see the young guy making some plays. And Curtis Samuel has eclipsed 3,000 career receiving yards this season. Let's fire up the film room presented by the Maryland Lottery Fast Play Games. Play fast, win fast today. Please play responsibly. All right, Coach, I think, you know, a lot of interesting things to take out of this Miami game, but I thought this guy right here, number 55, young player that you drafted, playing much better football and one thing you mentioned when we were kind of getting ready for this segment is Miami is always hunting for angles in the run game and he is the contained player to this defense as you know and so right now they've got him out leveraged right. and what has he got to do here to make sure this play doesn't happen got to get vertical and make a football play well one of the things that we talked about uh, more so than anything about against these guys was setting a vertical edge mm. setting a vertical edge and the idea was that anybody that passed you up that meant there was somebody there to block you right okay so again once once the tackle worked outside he knew he had somebody coming down to crack him and he had to get vertical and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, because they killed they've killed guys all season with this play, right? This kind of transportation series blocking down. Great job getting vertical and negating speed. Right, and the big thing he doesn't do, okay, is he didn't turn left with the guy right. crossing his face. Right. He got 
vertical past the guy. Right. Get clear this guy. Yes. And then you're setting the edge. You're, you're still setting the defensive edge, but that's happening up here and does a great job making a play. Good awareness by the young KJ Henry. Yes. Very nice job. And then maybe even more awareness. Oh, he's pretty juiced up there, coach. Yes, I don't know. It's good that. to see the young guys having some fun. <laughs> yeah. And so this one I think is maybe even better, right? Because like I think about this and I think about what his responsibilities are, what I assume his responsibilities are. He's getting jet action away, right? Mm -hmm. Jet action away. We're getting this guy coming to block him. Yep. And I've run this block a bunch of times. You get the cut, you get the sift, and he has to defend this running lane right here in addition to being a contained player. This lane right here is his. He's also got to defend stuff out here. So great job by him not over committing, feeling the difference, and then containing one of the fastest players in the NFL. Well, what we tell him is, again, understand what your chase mechanics are. Once somebody crosses your face and the ball's going away from you, right. the thing you have to do is throw your eyes ahead, which oh, he does. And again, because of that, he notices the whole action. He sees the whole play. And because he sees the whole play, he's able to work work laterally now and contain the reverse. Yeah, and it's, it's a really great play. And, he, and I love his angle, too, coming out of this, Coach. The yes. fact that he's not – we're not running to a spot, right? We're running to contain the, to contain the run, keep him inside. Also, a great job here by 20, running this down and just showing excellent effort. Great job getting people in hats to the football. But again, you mentioned this, right? M managing angles, right? They're always hunting for angles. And if he doesn't do this correctly, we've got angles here on the perimeter. We've got guys here. We've got guys here. This tight end's coming back for the corner. They're blocked up here. So great job by him getting to where he's got to go. And again, the big thing more than anything else is what we want to do is we want to continue to get vertical, set an edge, and get it turned back to where everybody is. The nice thing about where we are as far as this stuff's concerned is we got the safeties coming down with depth. We got Kendall working to make sure it stays inside minimum, and we're able to contain this play. Yeah, so nice to see a young football player making some plays, heady football plays. Because yeah. you see young guys do athletic stuff all the time, but to see them be dialed in like that, pretty cool. And I think he was pretty fired up there again, Coach. Is this yes. him right here? Yes, Let's see, is. is that him right there? Pretty juiced, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> right, and so this is something I thought was kind of fun, right? You're getting this choice concept. Love the idea of putting Curtis in the backfield. Such a twitchy, explosive yes. guy, trying to find matchups. And I thought this was some kind of crazy quarters, and you're like, or crazy coverage. You're like, no, Coach, it's quarters, right? right. And what are they doing here? They're matching this up, right. matching up man-to-man -man coverage. I like Curtis in a man-to-man -man right. situation on this right here. Especially on a linebacker because, again, in teams that play quarters, what they tend to match is from the inside, they match 2-3-2. Two, two. In other words, he's got the number two receiver, he's got the number two mm. re three receiver, and then he's got the number two on the backside. I see. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And that's a matchup that you're going to win Absolutely. nine out of ten times. So I feel really good about the matchup, and that's, what, that, that's really what, uh, what happens here is Curtis is using his quickness gets inside, okay, because he's supposed to be walling him off. He's not supposed to let him cross face. Oh, this this linebacker right here. Yes. He's supposed to, I mean, he's actually, you can see it here because he's got, in, he's inside leverage yes. in relation to where he's supposed to be. But you're saying just even, come be up, what do you want to be, more aggressive there in yeah. terms of walling Take him out? Take a little bit of the air out, out of it for the most part. Yeah. And that way you can get yourself in position because, again, if these guys had broken out, mm. okay, but the route call for something different, but if these guys had broken out, these guys would be over here a little bit further and he'd have all this space. All this space, right? Because yeah. that's where you can get hurt, right? Yes. Be and get beaten on the inside move. And one thing I just love is guys who have great feels, right? Mm -hmm. Great feel for this. We're going to run up here. We're going to work a double stick. And I can't do the double stick very well, Coach. And I don't know if you can either, but this is no. pretty good by him. I got no chance. <laughs> but that's good. And that linebacker has no chance, right? Because he's yeah. pretty twitched up. But the thing I love about this, you give them a very clear formation. Yeah. Curtis Samuel in the backfield, right? Curtis Samuel in the backfield because that specific formation allows you to set up explosive opportunities, right? Because yeah. here, I think they're, I don't know what coverage they're in. It looks like they're just manning or kind of matching this back Backside again, backside of three by one. This front, this safety is is rallying to the three by one side. He's kind of being the plug player there. But you get a one on one matchup with 55 on four, and instead of working across the face, coach, we get to go vertical for an explosive play. Again, they're playing some form I think of lurk, one lurk, where the safety's coming down. He's playing the hole. They're anticipating us running a deep dig. Yep. Okay, so he's coming down and he's reading the three receivers. What we got here is we got the man coverage that was anticipated. Yeah. Now it's up to Curtis to set him and mm -hmm. then get his burst going vertical. Yeah, that little bit of stutter there. That little bit of nuance there gets you where you want to go and gets him to settle his feet. Yep. And when you settle your feet against that guy, oh, yeah. that's going to be an explosive play. So it's been great to see him, man, coach, yep. playing good football, being utilized in the offense, and great to see the young players playing awesome. And hopefully they do that today against the LA Rams. Yep. Thank you. 
If you guys love the game plan, you'll love Command Center. Fred Santana and myself, we talk exclusively Commander's content every Thursday on the Commander's YouTube channel. And this week, we've got the captain out there to play some games with Fred Smoot. Stick around, because when we come back, Coach and I go behind enemy lines to prepare for the Rams' defense. That's next on The Game Plan with Ron Rivera, presented by your local Honda dealer. Welcome back to The Game Plan with Ron Rivera. Time for the Rivera Review, presented by DC Prime, Loudon's premier steakhouse. For dinner reservations or private dining call, 703-840-2099. All right, Coach, got the LA Rams coming up. Mm -hmm. Kind of a fun trip out to LA or what? It is. You know, it's going to be a good business trip <laughs> as far as those things are concerned. But it's a good opportunity because, you know, the one thing is it, it, it's, it's a good football team. And that great big old brand new stadium. Yeah, brand new stadium, right. So we're going to talk a little about the Rams defense to start here. And one of the things, I think they do some kind of fun stuff, kind of some complex stuff. But when you do complex stuff and not everyone's on the same page, yep. it leads to explosive plays. And against Baltimore, they gave them a couple explosive plays. They're in this, I would say, quarters. You said palms when we were kind of looking at this earlier, which I think is either one could be right. But let's talk about this route down here by uh, OBJ on the bottom here. Well, you know, I think he's reading it as quarters. And, okay. And, you know, because as you get a chance to look at it, there's a little bit of an exchange between him and number two. And for the most part, OBJ is just really trying to get right in between the two of them, right? right. Mm -hmm. And now as he goes to make his cut, I think he feels that the safety is now going to drive because mm. he's opened his hips, he's set to go, and then – what well, he does, he sticks him and gets vertical. Well, I mean, if it is quarters, the safety should drive, right? Right. So what should happen, though, is 44 should be working to overlap. To replace. That yeah. way, if he gets this stick nod, yeah. he's on top of it. It's so funny because as a fan, you know, people are talking about this. It's like, oh, the safety messed up. But really, they don't understand the exchange right. rules here and Correct. how important that is, right? Correct. Because, again, once number two goes outside, uh, you know, you now reading just the release of one. Oh, I okay? see what you're saying. So now that's why he turns and looks at one. Now, right. if he thinks one's going to dig, he's going to drive on top of it. But 44 should be going ahead to get the overlap position. That way, if he gets the nod, he's in position. I see what you're saying. And another thing I love about this, too, is the offensive line does a great job here of like letting Lamar step up. I mean, Aaron Donald's a beast, but good job by 76 here, kind of holding down the fort and letting Lamar work the pocket to get the football down the field. Yes. Well, the thing that they do more than anything else, again, is they pick up the pressure. Yeah. Okay. And it's really false pressure because again, what's happening is zeros dropping into coverage. Sure. So you're really getting the full complement of seven deep. Yes. Okay. So you got seven guys in the backfield working their coverage, and then somebody makes a mistake. At that point, all you need to do is give the quarterback a chance to go through his progression, mm -hmm. see what he says, sees, and then makes the throw. Yeah, and he does a great job. Skates the pressure, great protection, and that's how you get six points, right? Like yep. defenses can't hold up that long in the NFL, right? Because there's just too many good position players. That's a nice little dance there too. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about this one. This is uh, another play where I just thought this number 53 for them is he flashes when you watch yeah. film and he just kind of shows up here. I don't know the exact coverage. Do you think man coverage? I do. I think they're playing some form of cover one. What's interesting is they're bringing the safety. They're showing two high. <clears throat> like they're playing two man. Mm. And what's going to happen is once that back declares that he's going wide, mm. that safety will now take him. The other safety will play the post, and then the linebacker will read off the quarterback's eye. Yeah, and I think this like, that's great analysis right there because I think this – like usually when I see a, a plug player, I always see him match the three-receiver side. And so I think Lamar is thinking the same thing, and the backside slant's going to be open. Correct. But great job of him not just predetermining – the three receiver side here. Right. Well, the big thing for more than anything else is notice how he's checking to the three receiver side. Yeah. He sees no immediate threat underneath you're that he has to be concerned with. So when he brings his eyes back over, um, he now sees Lamar is committed to the left side. So watch what he does now. He takes his break and just goes to the ball. Yeah, we'd like to, like him to catch that football probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, he makes that catch. That's a quick set. Yeah, and then, so the other thing you said is like in this read, you would like Lamar to throw the ball to the back here probably, yes. right? Because yes. it's knowing down in distance and kind of being aware of the situation, right? Right. Correct. Because, again, the big thing is first and ten, it is the, it is the opening play of, of, of a two-minute drive. But, again, because and just knowing that this guy may be potentially coming from depth. It's number four, the safety. Yes. Yeah. 
you know, that might dictate a chance to throw it because really what he does is he lets that safety clear the hole. Mm, right. He tries to put it in. What he didn't anticipate was 53 getting a really good read on it. Yeah, it's a great job. And I, I think that's a great great point by you. He's, his eyes are to the three-receiver side, but he's drifting to where, like, you can get hurt in this coverage structure. So great job by him and uh, just kind of fun, good linebacker play there. Yeah, it really was. And, again, you'd love to see him catch it. That's a quick six. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he probably feels the same way. All right. <laughs> Offensively, I mean, I think this offense, in my opinion, is just driven by the quarterback. Mm -hmm. He just does so much at the line of scrimmage and getting him in the right plays, putting him in advantageous situations, and then making big-time throws. Right. What do you think about this play right here? Well, I think whatever he did, okay, as far as this is concerned, mm -hmm. he knew right away what the coverage was. Yeah. Okay, and he knew where he could attack this this defense. So again, what he's going to do is he's going to attack the, the middle run through player because he's he's reading cover too. Yeah. Okay, and at worst he's reading quarters, which means the middle is going to be open. Yeah, and I think the crazy thing about this is I you know I watch a lot of film and I don't know what he's looking at uh -huh. that gets him there because I don't see like anybody tipping it off. I don't see like a strong well, cover two shell. <sighs> I think really what gets him is he sees he sees the location of the safeties. Yeah. Okay. And so for the most part, if they're going to bring some sort of pressure, he thinks he can pick it up because he's going he's, he's to block seven. Yeah, right. Okay, so you're going to have a three-man route. And if that's the case, those linebackers aren't in position to blitz either. Yeah. So they can buy time. Yeah. But I do think he figured out that they were going to come into invert. And basically what an invert is is you're going to see two guys buzz out yeah. to the flats. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got the middle run through in 44 who's going to try and protect the middle of, of the defense and he's going to technically be responsible for number three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they're going to do is they're going to take the two corners are going to work to the middle as half safeties. Yeah. That's okay. But what's going to happen is because they're still so wide, he's just going to split them. And because he splits them. Okay. Puka's just going to score because, yeah. again, he, all he has to do is get his head down, outrun the middle run-through guy. Now, what helps here is the middle run-through guy is being held for whatever because he sees the tight end get jammed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Once that happens, he's got to take a quick look at number two. Now, number two is technically not a middle run-through player's concern. It's the safety. It's usually the safety. Yeah. But the safety, again, is, is awfully wide, and, and he really needs to be midpointing one and two. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it kind of puts the linebacker in a bad spot there. Right. And, and, and it's a great throw because what, he, what he's taught is that you throw it at the back of the, of the middle run-through player. Yeah. And I think if you look at the end zone, you pointed this out on the end zone. Great, great look here. Is number nine, right? Yes. Looks, looks off the safety, holds this front side safety over there, right? Yep. And then you mentioned the throw. Like, it doesn't get much better than no. that. Basically, they're taught to throw right at the back of the head and let the ball carry to the receiver. Receiver does a j great job because he doesn't react until the ball gets there. If he right. tried to put his hands out a little bit sooner, you know, the linebacker might have put his hands up in the air and it might have might have tipped it. But because he doesn't and wait till it gets to his his, uh, his lap for the most part, it's a good throw, good catch. And this guy, I mean, he's not like he didn't test well, 17. Yeah. But he shows up and with explosive plays all the time. He plays fast. Yeah. And that's the thing. He he gets off the ball clean. Okay. There's nobody trying to reroute him. Mm -hmm. So he's building up his momentum. And again, once he gets to that point, he knows. What's going to happen now is, and Matthew does a great job in terms of the throw because the throw is throwing him open. It's pulling yeah. him away from the safety. Absolutely. Okay, if he throws that ball up the hash. He's in trouble, yeah. Yeah, he's in trouble. So, yeah, I mean, great play by them. And just it shows kind of some of the nuance that they do yeah. really well. The other thing they do a ton of, I think they're the number one team in the NFL, is they get into a ton of bunches. Yes. And they love this little short motion out or short motion in to find better matchups and create some confusion. And obviously the, uh, the Baltimore Ravens get a little bit confused here. It, they do, because, again, it, it looks like, for the most part, they're playing some form of man right now. Yeah. Okay? And what they're going to do is, in this bunch, is they're supposed to have, you know, somebody passing and somebody yeah. picking somebody up. Well, they forget to pick up Puka again. Yeah. Okay? And, again, it, it's somewhere inside – there should be a guy at a second level on the inside to wall him off and roll with him, and apparently there wasn't. And when and you say second level, you're talking in that like eight to ten yard correct, range, right? Correct. And and usually what happens is people do what we call Brady for the Brady bunch. There's yeah. three guys. You, 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 you do the Brady, yeah. and what it means is somebody has somebody low outside, somebody has low inside, yeah. somebody has somebody high outside, and somebody has somebody high inside. inside. Okay, so you have all those areas covered. Okay, so again, if you were to do that, you know, 
21 is going to take the first low guy, yeah. mm-hmm. and he should be passing it. Yes. 14 should take the, the first high guy, and then what should happen is 26, there. 26 should be inside rolling with 17. Yeah, and you can just tell that little short motion kind of just broke his rules. He's like, I got Cooper Cup, man, I'm going to bounce with him, and it puts him in a bad spot. Yeah. Yeah. But, Coach, like every time we do this, I, I love the football insight, and it, I'm so excited to watch you guys play the Los Angeles Rams this week. All right. The stands have been packed at our place this year, and we're excited to keep building on that energy in 2024. With five picks in the first three rounds of the 2024 NFL Draft, ample cap space, and nine regular season games at FedEx Field, there's a lot to look forward to. Guarantee your place at FedEx Field for the 2024 season for just $50 when you can place a deposit. To learn more about season ticket benefits and secure your spot in 2024, visit commanders.com slash deposits. Stick around because right after the break, we'll hear from London Fletcher, Santana Moss, and Fred Smooth on what they want to see from the commanders in Los Angeles. This is the game plan presented by your local Honda dealer. It's time for some healthy competition presented by Ortho Virginia, official orthopedic and sports medicine partner of the Washington Commanders. Here's a look at this week 15 matchup against the LA Rams. This will be the first meeting in Los Angeles between these two teams since 2017 when Washington won 27 to 20. Washington is hitting the road after their bye week while the Rams had a three game win streak before losing in overtime last week to the Ravens. If you guys like the game plan, we have content for you all day. Saturday, yesterday, the boys were out in Hermosa Beach podcast. You can check that out on the Commander's YouTube page. That's Santana and B. Mitch. Then you get Santana and B. Mitch again for the pregame show today, 2.30 p.m. They're live out in L.A. giving you their thoughts and previewing the game. Immediately after the game, B. Mitch, Santana, Brian Colbert will be there giving you their thoughts on the results of this L.A. matchup. It's time for your ticket to a dub, presented by SeatGeek, the official primary ticketing partner of the Washington Commanders. Let's hear from the Command Center guys on what they want to see from the team after the bye week. All right, gentlemen, we're here to talk about a ticket to a dub going out to L.A. to, to go against these Los Angeles Rams. Tanner, you started off. Well, I would say beyond X's and O's, man, yeah. I think it's all about your will. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. I, mean, I think this team has been through a lot. You know, you come off a of bye week time to reset and now see what these guys are made of for these last four games yep. you know we can get we can get, we can get caught up in the, the whole playoff are we gonna, gonna have a playoff break yep. or not mm-hmm. I think that's out the door right now when it comes to my mindset yeah whether we yeah. have a chance or not we will see after these four games but I think they coming to this game going in LA knowing that they have a lot riding on their season yeah let's come out there and be the ones that's disappoint them for what they trying to do yep. you know what I mean yep. and I think more more so than anything have have the have the mentality to say, look, enough is enough. Let yeah. me go out there and put a stamp on my career. So yeah. we're going forward. I can say that I deserve to be out here playing. And game. I'm a professional. And we're going to LA. The one thing LA do a great job of is both birthing stars. It's yeah. a land of stars. <laughs> stars. Yeah. Yeah. Star. Supernova. I need I need the guys on the team to be stars. Yeah. I need Payne to be a star. I need Allen to be a star. I'm waiting on that game from Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Show me you are a star. What better time to do it than now? Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, it has to be those couple signature games where your stars come affect the game. They need to be the reason why we win. They need to be the purpose why we win. So I'm calling out everybody that claims to be top tier in the NFL on this team. Show me. Don't tell me. Listen, I'm going to keep it kind of simple. (laughs) When I watch number 99 for the Rams, you have to get him blocked. He is disruptive. He's going to disrupt you in the run game, Mm -hmm. going to disrupt you in the passing game. You got to get him blocked. (laughs) When you look at us defensively, yeah. Puka Nakua yes. and Cooper Cup, Cup. Yeah. Yes. we got to get those guys covered. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the hey, force Matthew Stafford. Let's make him uncomfortable. You talk yep. about John Allen, uh, Jonathan yeah, Allen, Payne. Ron Payne. And the A-gap yeah. is where you have yeah. having, having great games. Mm-hmm. Those guys need to look across the field and say, hey, I'm going out there. I want them to be calling, talking about me and mm-hmm. talking about us yep. when everything is said and done. We do those things, and that'll be a ticket to a win, a ticket to a dub, well, however you want to say, say it. it. Yeah. Yeah, no, but uh, Tanner, as you look at these guys from a receiver standpoint, how can we get Terry? McLaurin going. You got to go at him. I yep. think one of the things that we saw early in this season, when we went to him, he gave us his opportunity early for those enough. plays. Mm-hmm. You know how we said last year, you yep. know, some of those YOLO balls. Mm-hmm. And uh, we can go on and on about that. Yep. But I think in order for us to get what we're trying to get out of Terry, just got to go at them. Not a way to get a dub. 
All right, Coach, I know you're out in L.A. right now. Yes. But you and in, in, in movie magic, TV magic, you guys left on Friday. Yes, Why did you guys did. make the decision to leave on Friday? Well, first of all, we wanted to get a little acclimated to going out there and being on West Coast time. Mm. You know, it's a three-hour difference for the most part. Um, you know, So we left early. For the most part, we were able to get a good walkthrough in. Mm. That we had a chance to really get the guys out to get a little acclimated to what the weather is going to be like. And then we had our meetings that evening and just got ourselves ready to roll. You ever hit a rock and roll? That's exactly right. So now, Coach, what is your ticket to a dub leaving Los Angeles? Well, I think the biggest thing, first and foremost, is we've got to be able to account for players like Aaron Donald. Yeah. Okay. And again, give ourselves an opportunity to move the ball downfield, score some points. Defensively, no explosives. Keep it in front of us. Yeah. Keep it in front of us. That's the biggest thing. You know, um, if you can maintain that and 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 just not allow those things, make everybody earn every cent they they get. You give yourself a chance. Absolutely, Coach. Good luck today. Right. Always That's excited it. to watch you play. And make sure you guys tune in next week to watch the game plan with Coach Ron Rivera. If you like podcasts, you're in luck. Check out these pods we have for you every single week. Get Loud on Mondays with Fred Smoot and Michael Jenkins. Those guys are awesome, and they talk about everything. Next Men Up on Tuesdays with Ryan Colbert Jr. and your favorite Commanders player. Great insight on the individuals behind the helmet. Command Center on Wednesdays and Fridays with me, Santana, and Fred, and we are breaking down and previewing every single Commanders game. The Players Club on Fridays with London Fletcher, Santana Moss, and your favorite Commanders players. Make sure you check it out wherever you get your podcasts.